Hi everyone and welcome back to On The Shelf. So I'm back with another episode of What's On The Shelf where I talk about everything I've been reading, everything I've been buying, all the video games I've been playing, as well as maybe like a couple of anime or film reviews thrown in there as well. So I really love these videos. They give me a chance to talk about a lot of different things as opposed to just doing, you know, singular review videos and things like that. This video might be a little bit longer as well because I actually got uh, quite a few things in the last couple of months and it was also my birthday as well. So I guess you could kind of class this as a haul uh, if you want to. So be sure to stick around to the end and let me know all the things that you guys have been reading over the last couple of months. And yeah, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It does so much for the channel. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. Now, all that's out of the way, let's get straight to it. So of course, we're going to start off with the manga first and foremost. So I just want to get a few things that I bought out of the way, as well as a few things that I've been reading. So first off, we actually have a series that a lot of you will have read, and I have read myself as well, and that is Naruto. So yeah, I actually have been rereading Naruto. I'm up to volume four, and I actually forgot how much I really love this series. I think I've kind of fallen out of love with a lot of current Shonen Jump stuff. So I've been revisiting what got me into manga initially. And if you haven't read Naruto, I highly recommend it. There's just so much to it. There's so much background and like really well thought out sort of battle systems. And particularly like the first couple of arcs are just really hard hitting. So yeah, I'm currently up to the Zabaza and Haku arc if you like you know one of my all-time favorites and i'm just loving it okay next is something that isn't manga but i've actually been reading the walking dead so i'm currently up to volume 12 of the walking dead and it's something that i don't normally do i don't normally read sort of western comics but i'm a huge fan of the tv series I'm really enjoying sort of seeing the differences between what actually happens in the comic books versus what happens in the series, which characters are still alive and which ones aren't. And there's a few things in this that just really took me by surprise. A few characters that they killed off really early on in the comics that are still going in the series and, you know, vice versa, things like that. A few relationships that are a bit strange, but yeah. Uh, just really love it and wanted to quickly talk about it and if you haven't checked it out and you might want to try some western comics and i think it's really really good okay now on to the manga haul if you will so these are the things that i've either bought over the last couple of months or things that were given to me as gifts so first up if you follow me on instagram you might have seen that i did an unboxing for this and i just wanted to talk about it again because i love it so much and that is the gone manga box set this was advertised on twitter by i believe the handle is manga mogara and basically gone is a series about a dinosaur and there are actually no words in the manga whatsoever. So the whole thing revolves around this dinosaur who lives in like Africa, I believe. Essentially, each chapter is kind of like an episodic adventure of what's going on that day with Gon. And some of it is just really out there bizarre and some of it is hilarious. Like he kind of, at one point, one of my favorite chapters, he gets inside a shark and like attacks an even bigger shark. Like it was just wild and he kind of gets on the back of a lion and like digs his claws in and rides it like a horse and things like that. It's just really comedic. But what drew me to this box set was not only, you know, just how beautiful it is. So just quickly show you, it's got kind of a really cool cardboard cutout of a dinosaur tail and all of the volumes are, you know, beautiful colors, really, really great quality. But yeah, what drew me in was it's published by J-Pop, which I believe are an Italian publisher. And the kind of buy-in to get this series was because there are no words in it. So you don't actually need to speak any particular language. I don't speak Italian and there's no Italian to actually read in this, aside from maybe some of the like titles of the chapters and things like that, which you could easily Google anyway. If anyone's interested, I picked it up on Amazon, um, like the Italian Amazon, and they ship it to the UK. I'm not sure about the US and things like that. You might have to look into it. But the good thing about Amazon is, you know, the postage was actually really, really reasonable. Like I think it cost me 
like the box set is about £35 and it cost me roughly four or five pounds shipping which was just a fantastic deal so yeah I urge you to go and check that out and if you haven't already then go and follow me on Instagram because I'm always doing sort of little things like that little posts about what I'm reading and things that I'm picking up as I go along and sometimes they don't necessarily make it to the channel so it's worth giving me a follow on there as well. Okay the next thing I picked up was kind of easy as well because if you've seen one of my most recent videos, I did a video on the genius of Taiyo Matsumoto and one of the series that I don't own by him that I'm really, really keen to check out is Sunny. So I picked up Sunny Volume 1, a really nice Viz signature, like hardcover. You know, all of the Taiyo Matsumoto releases are really, really nice, really great quality paper. All I know about this is it's about an orphan and Taiyo Matsumoto himself is an orphan, so there's kind of a little bit of a biography, you know, true story in there, I think. I'm not entirely sure. The reason it's took me so long to pick these up is because they're criminally expensive. Like, if you buy them brand new, each volume's about £16. Thankfully, I found this on eBay, and I, they were doing a little deal on eBay at the time as well, where I got a bit of money off, so it cost me about four quid. So really happy with this and definitely keeping my eyes out to pick up the other copies as well. Okay, now coming to the birthday haul. So these are all things that people bought me, or you know, I was gifted money and things like that, and I bought some things myself. Not everything has arrived yet. Some of it I've had to pre-order and go and pick it up later, so you'll see that in a later video. But the first two I picked up were Jujutsu Kaisen, Volume 5 and 6. I've spoke about this briefly, I believe, in the last What's on the Shelf video. And um, thus far, it's not massively impressing me. I really enjoy kind of like the action and the wacky, zany characters that are in it. But for the most part, I think the pacing of the story is a bit weird and it chops and changes every so often and kind of flits between characters too much for my liking. But I am sticking with it because I don't really read too much current Shonen Jump aside from One Punch Man and like Black Clover and things like that. So it is one that does interest me more than say others but I'm not sure if it's gonna stand the test of time just yet. The next one you might bought alongside those two copies of Jujutsu Kaisen was actually a Shintaro Keigo's Super Dimensional Love Gun. That was a bit of a tongue twister to say. But essentially, you know, I've spoke about Dementia 21 before, which was a really cool kind of out there series by Keigo. I'd never read any Keigo before. He's very explicit, he's really gory and things like that. And this was one that's been on my list for ages to pick up just because of how interesting the cover is and how much I love his art style. But I definitely, you know, I've read half of this and I had to put it down. I can't recommend this, to be honest. I think it's just very, very explicit, but to the point that it, it gets really disgusting. And I get that that's the point, like that's the genre that he's in and that's what he's going for. And it's horror in itself to kind of read something like that, but I just wasn't in the mood for it. That doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. And if you're under the age of 18, then please don't go and Google this one. But there's some stuff in there that really, really kind of threw me off and was just a bit gut-wrenching as well. So I still love Kago. I still, you know, plan to pick up more of his works if they get published and things like that in the UK. And I just love his art style. And for another side note as well, if you didn't know, you can actually go and order artwork from him directly. So he'll do you like a caricature and things like that, which I'm sort of debating whether or not to get done. He's just a really, really fantastic artist and he's definitely original. No one else is putting anything out like him. But this one, every chapter is kind of focused around a different woman and in some sort of sexually explicit situation. And it just gets gross for the most part. Okay, next in keeping with my previous video, my girlfriend bought me for my birthday uh, the next two volumes that I needed of The Girl From The Other Side. So I got volume six and volume seven. I've yet to read these yet because I just know as soon as I finish them, I'm gonna want the next one. I believe there's only eight or nine volumes out so far and I think it ends on like volume 11. So it's quite a short series and if you wanna know my thoughts on it, then I will leave a link to the previous video where I talk more in depth about it, but it's one of my favorite reads of this year and 100% plan on collecting the rest of it. And the next volume that she got me was The Golden Sheep. Um, this is by Kaori Ozaki. Sorry if I've butchered that. Another short series. I think it's only three volumes. Beautiful release by Vertical. And if you're not familiar with this author, they actually produced The God's Lie, which was one of my kind of 
featured series that I talked about on the best short manga to check out. It's only one volume. It's really, really hard hitting and a fantastic read. So yeah, I'm really, really happy to have this. I don't know much about it. I just know that I really love the artwork and I really love the covers. So we're going to see what this is like and expect a review very, very soon. But as I said, it's only three volumes. If it's anything like The God's Lie, then it's gonna be fantastic. And if any of you guys have personally read this, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Okay, and thirdly, my girlfriend bought me Dream Fossil, the complete stories of Satoshi Kon. So if you know anything about this guy, you will know what a genius he was. He produced, you know, some of the best anime films ever, like Paprika, Perfect Blue, I also really love Paranoia Agent, which was a fantastic series. They're all kind of like psychological horror, really thought provoking weird stuff. But if you didn't know, he was actually a mangaka first and foremost. And I think my friend Uchu Shell has already made a video on him in the past, which I'll leave a link now in this video for you to go and check out. But this is the first of his manga works that I've ever owned. And I'm really excited. There's a few other works that I want to pick up. There's Tropic of the Sea, and Opus as well. I'm not sure if there's any more, but this one I'm really, again, very keen to check out. Haven't yet read it, but expect a review of this very soon as well. So we've got two more books as part of the birthday haul. The first one is The Isle of Dogs. So this is based off of the Wes Anderson film. I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan. Um, Isle of Dogs and I would say The Grand Budapest Hotel are probably my favourite of his films. But this is like a manga adaptation. I don't think it's a the complete just telling of the film. I think it's kind of a short story, um, side story if you like, about the main characters or maybe a different take. I haven't yet read it. But this was by Dark Horse and it's quite a really nice book. It's like a hardback, quite a thin uh, book, but it's got really lovely glossy pages as well. Um, that are just really nice and this is just something really different that I was really glad to get. And last but not least for the manga haul, uh, I actually got the Fooly Cooly Omnibus. So Fooly Cooly is one of my favourite anime ever. I'm not so sure if the manga is as good because it's something that you can't quite recreate in manga format but if you don't know anything about it, it's been described in the past as kind of like a metaphor for puberty. So there's lots of weird things that happen in this. The, the first few kind of episodes of the anime involve the main character just meeting this really strange girl who rides a moped and she runs him over. Because of that, a robot comes out of his forehead and he gets involved in loads of kind of weird hijinks and just every episode is just straight up crazy. It was made by Gainax, so you can expect that sort of madness that came out of them. But I imagine that the manga follows a kind of similar format and I just can't wait to read it. I've had a flick through and the artwork is just really zany and crazy again, so something very different. And it's only like two volumes cut in this nice little omnibus. So yeah, really looking forward to reading that as well. Okay, for the next part of the video, I'm going to talk about some of the anime I've been watching. So I guess the big thing that I watched over the last couple of months was Gundam 00. So I'm a huge sort of Gundam fan, but more of the kind of Gundam Wing, Gundam Seed era of Gundam. I never really delved into the Universal Century timeline aside from I'm reading the origin and really loving it. But Gundam 00 is kind of one of the ones that is like a standalone universe that's self-contained so I was really drawn to that. It's one that people always recommend to me and I've seen recommended online as well but actually I was very disappointed so I got a really beautiful box set from Anime Limited for the movie and the series because of the high praise that it got but I found all the characters in the story to be a little bit lackluster. If you don't know what it's about, it's all about an organization that are trying to stop all warfare across the world. So they use these huge mechs called Gundams to essentially keep the peace amongst all the warring nations of the world. But it was a, my issue with it was that their whole kind of ethos was to keep the peace and, you know, save the world from conflict. But in order to do that, they engage in a lot of conflict and a lot of like battles and things like that. And they kill a lot of people. And it was kind of, I just didn't really get the whole vibe of the, the organization to begin with. So it was already off to a bad start. I also thought that just there was a lot of characters and I didn't really learn a whole lot about any of them 
or really kind of connect with any of them either. And I gave it a good go. I watched most of the first season. So if you're going to go and tell me now that it gets really good in season two, I don't want to have to watch more than 25 episodes to enjoy an anime. But hey, that's just my opinion. So yeah, sadly, Gundam 00 wasn't really for me. I will say that I really loved the, the mech designs and I really thought the animation was very, very good. And considering I really love Gundam Wing, I thought, you know, it can't really get much worse than that because it's pretty bad, like, for the most part. But maybe the nostalgia carries Gundam Wing a little bit more. Who knows? But, yeah, it just wasn't for me, sadly. But I suppose the main thing that I watched anime-wise this last month was I went to see Akira in 4K. So yeah, I braved the cinema. They were really good. You wear a mask and they clean down all the seats and things like that. They socially distance you in the theater. And there's like a one way system where you can only exit through one sort of fire exit and you can only enter through the main entrance and things like that. So you're not actually crossing paths with a lot of people, which was really good. Now, in terms of the film, first I want to say, stunningly beautiful like in 4k it just looks amazing like everything's so crisp you would not believe that it was made so long ago and i still think it stands the test of time as being one of the best anime films ever created especially for what it did in the west it introduced a lot of people to anime myself included and it's just you know they don't make films like that anymore they don't make anime films like that and I just think everyone should watch it if you haven't already. Secondly, the sound in that cinema blew me away. Like I already really love the score and the soundtrack of Akira, but just ramped up that little bit more in the cinema just was fantastic. It was so good, I was so immersed. I think that I've watched it on home release before and sometimes I felt like the film was a little bit long, but I think if you watch it in the cinema, there's something about it that's just very immersive and you really, you know, I was really engaged and I was quite sad when it ended. This was actually the first time that I've watched the film since finishing the manga as well. So. I will say the manga is infinitely better. As with most things, you know, the book is usually better than the film. And uh, this is still the case with Akira. But I think you've got to appreciate what it did for the West. And considering it came out before the manga was completed, I'm really like, I really love the ending. It's not as good. They miss out the vast majority of what the main kind of plot is in the manga. There's a huge arc in the manga that gets a little bit like Mad Max style in this kind of deserted wasteland of Neo Tokyo, which is just my favorite part of it. And I really wish that was in it. But I do know that I believe they're making a another anime series of Akira. And if they do it in kind of the same style and the same animation techniques as they did with the movie, I'm not sure they will, but I hope they do. I think it will be amazing. So yeah, keep your eye out for that. And if you get a chance, please go and watch Akira in the cinema. You won't regret it. And next, I just want to quickly talk about some of the video games I've been playing over the last couple of months. And I also got quite a few as gifts for my birthday as well. So first up, I've been playing Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Uh, pretty random. I think it's one that a lot of people kind of missed off of their their radar if you like for the switch just because of how kind of childish it is but it's actually just really charming fun sort of puzzle game where you play as um, toad and you're searching for like gold coins and diamonds and things like that on each level but the way it's done it's kind of like every level is a bit of a diorama and you can turn and twist the level in different ways and move kind of different things to solve puzzles it's really fun not sure how long it is i've played about 12 or 13 levels so i'm not sure if it's kind of a very short game or not but yeah this was a gift and i really like it so if you haven't checked it out um i mean it's not for everyone it's a pretty laid back game but it's just a lot of fun and it's something easy to throw on every now and then now for games that i got for my birthday i bought myself with a bit of money that i had um, Dragon Quest 11, so this is the kind of special definitive edition for the Switch. I'm not sure like what extras are actually on this, but I, one of the things that I know of is you can play the whole game in either like 2D or the classic sort of 3D format. You know, I've never played a Dragon Quest game, so I'm really excited to dive into this. I'm a huge JRPG fan, and with all the character designs being made by Akira Toriyama, I really don't know why it's took me so long to 
to check out a Dragon Quest game. But for the most part, it's kind of like a bit of a stereotype, save the world type adventure with a weird sort of cast of characters. It's turn-based battle system, of course, you know, um, but it's just a really beautiful looking game. Uh, there's a lot of sort of open world exploration and things like that and I really love the, the character designs obviously and the enemy designs as well. I think they're really cute, I think they're really weird and it just looks like you're playing Final Fantasy but in a, a Dragon Ball world or something. It just looks really cool so yeah super excited to check that out. Next from my parents this is sort of the big one that I was really anticipating. I got Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now I know a lot of people who own Switches have got this game and you know played it to death and I don't want to bore you with a review because you know it's just Mario like who doesn't love Mario Sunshine was like my all-time favorite so I'm really really happy that we got this and I'm excited to see what Nintendo do in the future I think it's a weird choice to make it like a limited run I mean it's great for them because people just went out and bought it up like crazy so it's good in a way but it's just a bit of a strange kind of marketing scheme that I don't 100% agree with but who knows we might get like a Zelda all-stars in the future like I would love that I'm not sure which games I'd like to see on there definitely Majora's Mask and Wind Waker and then maybe let's go Skyward Sword just because it's one that I didn't finish but you know let me know down below like what are your favorite sort of GameCube and Wii games and things like that and what games would you really love to see in a collection like this so yeah super happy to have this did not expect this to come out this year so it was quite a pleasant surprise for 2020 considering what sort of year it's been. Okay and finally for the games that I've been playing I got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. This is like the remade version for the PS4. This was a gift from my brother and I haven't stopped playing it <laughs> since my birthday. I keep meaning to sort of play all these other games that I've got and I've been looking forward to but this one just took me by surprise as to how much I still love these games. I was a huge Tony Hawk's fan as a kid. I used to just put on um, Hybrid Theory or Meteora by Linkin Park on loop and then just play the hell out of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1, 2 and 3. I'm totally obsessed. I had all the underground ones, you know, everything up to the weird one where he released that kind of um, skateboard that you would actually stand on. I didn't get that one. I think the PlayStation has been lacking a, sp a skateboard game really because Skate 3 was the last big one that came out on the PS3 and I know we're getting Skate 4 um, but that's not coming out until like the PS5 maybe even later so yeah this was just a really kind of weird game to come out of nowhere again and I really hope that we see more of these HD re-releases of Tony Ox games really love them and yeah pretty much completed this now so obsessed and last but not least I just want to give a very quick film recommendation. I'm a huge movie fan. I watch a lot of films, so I really love to kind of throw one of these in every now and again, just to let you know what I've been watching, what I've really enjoyed, and what I think you might enjoy as well if you haven't seen them already. So the film that I want to talk about for this episode is Parasite. Now, this was made by, I don't want to butcher his name, so Boon, uh, um, Bong Joon-ho. <coughs> He's made quite a few films. He made The Host and Snowpiercer as well was another one. I've seen The Host and I quite enjoyed it, but he's kind of like a director that just, it was never really on my radar. I don't watch a whole lot of Asian cinema. Um, I've seen quite a lot of Asian horror films and things like that, but the reason that this one got my attention for obvious reasons is that it won the Oscar for best film. It was a year where a lot of brilliant films came out. So you had 1917, which I watched and completely was like this has got to win best film and then I watched Joker and I said the exact same thing for that as well I was like what is this parasite like it's just come out of nowhere why is this winning best picture and I think I just put it on the back burner didn't think to watch it until now and I 100% regret it if you haven't seen Parasite please go and watch it now if you can it's one of the best films I've ever seen I would say and that's not just me you know kind of um, sort of jumping on the Oscar bandwagon if you like it was just it had everything this film has got absolutely everything in it and it's just so masterfully done and I can't wait to see what this director brings out in the future now I went in completely blind with Parasite and I think that's the best way to do it I didn't really know a whole lot about it I didn't really know much of the plot or what was going to go on 
If you want to know a quick, quick synopsis is it's about a very poor family. They meet a rather rich family and they seize some opportunities to change their fortunes, if you like. It was just so good. I can't really get my words out properly to talk about how much I enjoyed this film. I think the reason that I loved it so much was because it's just got a lot of comedy in it. There's a lot of heartwarming moments in it and it's all just about family really. Like behind all of it, it was just about this family trying to survive, trying to make ends meet and trying to um, sort of get by with each other. Um, but the way they do that it leads to some very comical moments. There's a lot of edge of your seat moments where you literally, there was points where I think I just held my breath to see what would happen next. And just when you think you know how this film is going to end, you don't. Like, it was just amazing. There's so much in this for you to go and check out. And that's all I really want to say without spoiling it too much. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this episode of What's on the Shelf. I really love doing them because it just gives me an opportunity to talk about a whole lot of different things. I got a lot of stuff this month and I'm really excited for all of it. It's kind of like a kid in a sweet shop. I just want to read everything all at once but I have to rein it in sometimes as well. But yeah, um, please let me know what you guys have been checking out, what video games you've been playing and things like that. I think that's the best thing about this platform is it just gives me an opportunity to really, you know, just talk to like-minded people and find out a little bit about you guys and what, you're, what you like. And I've gotten so many recommendations and things that I would have never gotten if I hadn't have started a YouTube channel. So for that, you know, I'm really grateful for this platform and for the channel that I just sort of took a leap of faith in creating all that time ago. Thank you guys. If you really enjoyed this video, then please leave a like to show your support. And yeah, I'll catch you next time. Peace.